Hello and welcome to Cover by Cover. I'm a stylish, noir-infused tribute to the rip-roaring 50s. And I'm Batman. It'd work better if I had a cape. Are you serious right now? That's the best you could come up with? Anyway, the show we're looking at today takes its primary inspiration from a certain 90s Western animation. One featuring a certain Cape Crusader. Darkwing Duck? No. Well, you know, the... Uh, I am the terror that flaps in the night? Talking about the primary inspiration for today's anime. It's Batman! Batman the Animated Series! Oh. Oh. Oh! Batman! Man, okay, that, you know, I probably should have known that, considering I introduced myself as Batman just a few moments ago. You are the dumbest human I've ever known. Mm. But enough about your shortcomings. Ladies and gentlemen, let's dive right into the big O. Let's get dangerous, as Batman would say, right? Originally conceived in 1996, the Big O has relatively humble roots as a gimmick to sell toys. That Transformers and Gundam money was just too tempting a honeypot to pass up on. However, concept designer Keiichi Sato wasn't content with simply creating a toy-driven cash cow, so he partnered with Kazuyoshi Katayama of Those Who Hunt Elves fame and head writer Chiaki Kanaka, known for his work on Serial Experiments Lane and Helsing. Together, they were able to flesh out a fully realized world of intrigue, mystery, noir style, and, of course, giant robots that punch the shit out of one another. The Big O is an homage to many influential shows and genres, not the least of which are the Super Robot anime of yesteryear and Batman the Animated Series. This isn't surprising as Sunrise, the animation studio behind the Big O, was a subcontractor for Warner Brothers and specifically worked on Batman. Play to your strengths! Sentai Filmworks rescued the show from a fate of eternity in limbo, and now both seasons can be acquired for far less than an arm and a leg. No offense, Edward. But of course, we must ask ourselves, is the big O worth your time and money? Or is it worth the big zero time and money? And we must also ask ourselves, did the creators of the show intend the name to be a euphemism for an orgasm? I'm gonna show him my O face. O, O, O. How about the big no? Yeah. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, androids and amnesiacs, this is the big... You ruined it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. My name is Roger Smith. Excuse me? Uh, what was that, Spike Spiegel? I didn't quite hear you were being one of the most iconic voices in all of anime history. I'm sorry, Steve Bloom, but... It's time to retire. Welcome to Paradigm City, the place where vibrant colors go to die. Actually, unlike some other fair, <laughs> we can already tell that this show is going for a definite, visually striking, aesthetically pleasing tone. Paradigm City is a city that never sleeps. As of 40 years ago, apparently, which is the earliest memory anybody can recall. Some event happened that deleted everyone's memories, so the city's littered with relics of a bygone age, unused and lost to time. I wish our world could forget a few things that happened 40 years ago. Our hero, Roger Smith- Uh-uh-uh. Say it right. I'm not gonna call him Spike Spiegel every time we refer to him. Hmm. How about Mugen? No! Uh, Zeb Aurelios. How about this one? Kazuma! No! Spike is on his way to the grocery store. Fine. Spoil sport. <sighs> Roger is on his way to what appears to be some sort of negotiation. I have to assume this, given that the title of the episode is Roger the Negotiator, and not Roger the Businessman, or Roger the Sous Chef. Also because he's pulling in to confront some rather shady looking individuals. I thought the arrangement we made was clear. In a fair deal, all parties lay their cards on the table, Mr. Beck. <clears throat> 
Well, she is as pale as I am. This all appears to be in order. You can remove the blindfold now, Miss Soldano. Wait just a moment, you're far too pale! We've gone from Jim Gaffigan to Prometheus Engineer! Abort mission! Dorothy! What is wrong with your head? Beldar, you've gotten so old! Now, about the rest of my fee? This isn't my daughter, fool! Huh? Are you blind? How could you possibly mistake that for my precious Dorothy? Hmm. Come to think of it, she is making some strange whirring noises. That isn't normal in daughters, is it? Anyway, after being berated by the old codger, our hero activates one of his many spy gadgets. You know, like negotiators have. And the money goes launching out of the bad guy's car. The case! Stop! The cash is in there! <laughs> See... That's the real problem here. They didn't just shoot open a briefcase full of money. They shot open a briefcase containing a portal to the dimension where all money ever comes from. The thing is just propelling itself through the air now without the need of Roger's briefcase rockets. See you later! The scene just kind of abruptly ends after that and we see Roger going into a tavern to meet a contact. He... oh... Well, that clearly draws no inspiration from anything ever. Anyway, Roger has a brief word with this bearded fellow who gives him a lead to follow up on relating to Dorothy's whereabouts. Roger exposits more about how the entire city lost all its memories as he drives and arrives home to his... Oh, come on now. Don't you think this is getting a little ridiculous? Homage is one thing, but this is bordering on copyright infringement. You've got Roger Smith driving a black vehicle with gadgets, arriving at his penthouse, and being greeted by his butler, uh, Norman. You must be Igor. No, it's pronounced Igor. Alfred, I mean, Norman informs Roger that he has company. Being the suave son of a bitch that he is, he immediately puts his swagger to hard work. I have a special house rule that only lovely young women can unconditionally enter this mansion. How may I be of service, miss? <gasps> Dorothy is actually here to ask Roger for protection. As he thinks about it, his old friend the police chief drops by. We were told there was a kidnapping, but we did some digging and found Soldano has no daughter. Anyway, he tried to make a deal with the kidnappers. At any rate... The reason I stopped by was to give Paradigm City's top negotiator a word of advice. You really blew the job, pal. You're going to Soldano's factory, aren't you? Do I have to make you get out? You may try, but I'm doubtful that a mere human would have the strength. Roger and Dorothy travel back to the factory where the episode began, where they find Soldano on the verge of death. I never wanted to build it for people like them. <laughs> what did you build? <sighs> My final request is to be loaded into a cannon and fired into space. Soldano's final word is Nightingale, and he breathes his last. Fortunately, they won't need any fancy funeral because bazooka time! <laughs> Roger isn't having any of it and decides to straight up James Bond the shit out of the goons. You're a louse, Roger Smith. Finally, she's saying what I'm thinking. What? He never returned my phone calls, the scoundrel. Yeah. Roger gets a call on the bat phone and learns that trouble's a brewing downtown. I... oh. Okay, a suddenly giant robot bee? Talk about your jarring tonal shifts. I mean, yeah, I know the show's called The Big O and has a giant robot on the front of the DVD case, but... 
This is somehow still out of nowhere. Anyway, the Doro Roger duo rushed to the scene. This dome is cordoned off, hotshot. Let me see your ID. Remember my face next time, okay? <gasps> anyway, Dorothy spots someone she calls her father, and our giant robot friend takes a look under the dock, and there she saw a rock. But it wasn't a rock. Wait, that doesn't make any sense what you just said. Nobody is matching towels. Big Bertha goes straight up fetish lord, unleashing her throbbing metal tentacles and... The police start shooting at them? I'm sorry, I know a gun feels powerful and all, but there are some times when you should just understand that that ain't just gonna work, guys. All of it fits. That's what she That's said! What she Damn it! That's what I was gonna say, you pizza shit! <laughs> Suck it! Whatever, I don't have time for this big dumb. Time for one of the coolest entrances in any giant robot anime ever. Talk about throwing fuel on the fire. Krabby Bot turns out to be Dorothy's sister. Don't ask, robot families are complicated. Roger piloting the big O and Dorothy one duke it out. We won't show you the whole fight here, but heavens to Betsy, is it awesome. There's really only one thing to say here, and that's... Oh! Dorothy's still in shock, considering Roger's giant robot just put a fist through her sister's stomach, and is frozen stone still. As the incapacitated behemoth comes crashing down upon both her and the police chief, the episode ends with a to-be-continued. Oh, wow. I hope they're gonna be okay. Man, that would suck if we had to wait like a whole week to see the next episode, but it's a good thing that we do too on our show, right? Well, JT, about that, there's something very important I have to tell you, and it's going to change everything. I just ordered us chimichangas! Whoa! <laughs> the cliff-hung predicament is solved by... A giant hip harpoon. Oh. Well, sure, that, that works, I guess. Anyway, despite being saved, the police chief feels the need to sick the military on the Big O. Not one to kowtow to the man, Biggie pieces out. The brave military police won't go underground. You afraid of the dark? Damn it, Roger. Why do you always turn up just as the hero we're always chasing gets away? You're worse than that one superhero. Uh... Peter Parker? Uh, no, no, the DC Comics one. Clark Kent? Not him either. The one who's the billionaire playboy, wears a dark suit, I think, you know? Tony Stark? We get a glimpse at how the Big O makes it around town. On an extremely advanced and most certainly exceedingly expensive set of railways. It's a good thing every subway, tunnel, and sewer worker forgot how to get underground in the mass amnesia event. Otherwise, some folks would probably have some significant and difficult questions for the city planners. Dorothy has vanished, and Roger does some more investigating to try to track her down and possibly learn more about her past. He travels to a club by the name of Nightingale, after the dying word of Soldano, where he encounters a young woman who looks almost identical to Dorothy. Young man, who are you? And from where do you know my granddaughter? <laughs> Granddaughter? That's correct. Which makes me Dorothy's grandfather. Wait. If she is your granddaughter, that means that you are... Her grandfather! Uh, hey, hang on, shut up a second, I'm thinking. Uh, where was I? Uh...
Turns out the mystery girl is also named Dorothy, a singer at the club. And, well, turns out that she actually is Dorothy the robot, despite her eyes looking significantly different. Uh, wait, what? Dorothy, don't! Wow, so you saw Dorothy get tased, and that made you decide to clumsily lunge forward at the guy with the taser? What did you think would happen, that he'd conveniently run out of batteries in between shocks? Dumbass. Back to giant robot action, because we need the big robots in the show about big robots! And that means... Oh! It's coming, Mega Deuce. <laughs> Actually, the big O is also called Megadeuce. I guess because they need to call it something other than a size and a letter. Anyway, what's this asshole doing back now? And why is he all crazy nuts? Is he Roger's arch nemesis? The... Uh, spoker? <laughs> you gotta put the legacy of a brilliant scientist to good use! <laughs> <laughs> Who's afraid of the bad big O? <laughs> Looks like you're really screwed this time! It turns out that Dorothy 1 is now being controlled by D Dorothy. Dorothy. Okay. Roger manages to pull her free and... <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Maybe if we close the doors, he won't know we're here. Where'd they go? You're welcome. Roger waxes poetic, makes Dorothy part of the household now, apparently, and then lays down some ground rules. The first one is a rule that even I follow. If you stay here, then you wear black. Your sense of fashion, Roger, really reeks. Well, JT, were you as satisfied as I was? I would continue watching. <laughs> I'd show this show my O face. Didn't have the same ring that time. <clears throat> this is a fantastic anime. Despite all the jokes we made about the intensely obvious similarities between this and Batman, it actually has a unique feel all its own. The world's intriguing and there are enough mysteries in place to keep us wanting more. I don't expect any of these questions to be answered anytime soon, but the journey here should be a ton of fun if these first two episodes are any indication. The soundtrack is great, I love Roger as a hero, and the giant robot fight scenes are beyond epic. If I had one concern going forward, it would be that the episodes might turn into filler too quickly. We got a lot of story up front introducing Dorothy, but now that basically all ties to her past have been blown up, shot, or punched to smithereens, I don't know what else we could explore about her. I guess we'll have to continue watching to see, and believe you me, I will be continuing to watch. Yeah, I give it a 10 out of 10. Batman out of Batman. But that's gonna do it for today. As always, I'm Will Ryan. And I'm JT Camp, reminding you at home, if you're going to emerge out of the ground in a giant robot, please make sure to do so in the center of the street instead of underneath buildings. It will literally save lives. Hmm. Some good practical advice. Hmm. Wait, what? You can buy a giant robot? <laughs>